Hello and welcome to Memorial Stadium here at Sydney High School for tonight's regional final matchup between the Fort Longview Redskins and New Bremen Cardinals. I'm Nate Garlock alongside John Serby. And John, it is a cold, windy, snowy night. Couldn't ask for probably worse elements to play a football <laughs> game, let alone a regional final. But it is November in Ohio. These teams will have to adapt. And I think that is going to be the story for what looks like it's going to be the majority of this game. Yeah, I think you can look at all these the strategies that you maybe implemented during the week, and those are kind of out the window right now. Just in the last hour, Nate, the, the weather's really changed. I mean, we, we've been windy and cold all day, but now you throw in the snow, and the wind is whipping to the south. It's going to be an interesting game. I think it's going to be a game where a team that can just get a score or two is going to be the one that's going to come out on top. New Bremen won the first battle tonight as they chose to kick the football off here in the first half, forcing uh, Fort Loramie to have to go directly into that wind as the wind is moving directly south tonight. Um, I haven't pulled up the weather channel, but if I had to guess, I mean, I'd say we're at least 20 plus mile an hour winds tonight, and those are sustained, not gusts. It is a, uh, it's a rough night. And uh, we'll see, though, New Bremen now getting ready to kick this one using the wind. We'll see if that helps them at all here. And uh, Fort Lorme is going to have to find some adjustments early on. Yeah, and I've seen it where teams will actually uh, take the, the kickoff in both halves just to have the wind so that they can get a great field position to start. All right, here comes Fort Lorme out on the kick. Nice return as they're going to be met by the Cardinals just past the 25-yard line. So they'll come out for their first excuse me, as they're going to come out for their first possession of the night at the 27-yard line. Yeah, one of the things that you got to look at is is just field position because I think, you know, if you if you, you have to think about, I think throwing the ball is kind of out the window. I mean, you're going to have to look at short passes, maybe screens, but punting into the wind is going to be treacherous. So you might even see some opportunities where teams are going to go for it on fourth down tonight. Fort Lormie led by quarterback Caleb Maurer coming out for his first possession. Getting some things settled with the football is getting the, a dry football out there and trying to keep everything um, as clean as we can tonight is, is going to be important. So Fort Lormie cutouts in the shotgun to start, start things off tonight. Caleb takes a snap. He's going to hand it off. Jet sweep to the right. Looking for a little bit of room, changes direction, gets back up to the middle of the field. Nice gain on first down, going to bring up second and about five. Now, you mentioned it kind of just a minute ago, but even the field conditions, the snow, as you can see on, on TV right now, is it's uh, it's changed. I mean, the field is slick, and those even those jet sweeps to the outside are going to be really tough to cut. And, and any positive yardage, that's a good first down gain because any positive yardage you can get is going to be a beneficial. Second and six after a four-yard gain on first down. Before Lorman out, we're gonna, Caleb's going to pull it down himself, go right up the middle, and he is met by a host of Cardinals. He's going to be stopped after a short game. Yeah, I think this is something that Fort Lorman has done here in the playoffs. I think during the season um, really uh, – did not have a lot of quarterback runs, but as of late have been trying to work in those quarterback runs. Definitely in the playoffs, it's been they've been successful the last few weeks. I put up a lot of points on the scoreboard, but uh, um, they're going to have to give the ball and spread the roll around a lot tonight. Big third down, third and fourth for the Redskins. We'll see if they're able to pick up a first down. Mauer takes the snap a little bit high. He's able to gather it in, keeps it himself, and he. Fights out of some tackles. Looked like maybe he's going to get out of trouble, but then he's wrapped up. He's going to be dropped for a loss to bring up fourth and long. Yeah, Maurer really, uh, once he, the snap was kind of high and he tried to readjust, that uh, it was uh, the timing was off, and the timing's not good anyway with, uh, with the conditions that they are. So this will be the interesting thing, Nate, is how these uh, special teams will play out into this win. So now the Redskins, they're going to punt this one away, and they have to punt this directly into the wind. Could be a big spot here for New Bremen. Even if you get this one off clean, I'm not real sure what you can do with this. You're going to have to be looking at low line drive kicks and hope, hoping for some bounces once it hits the turf. And I kind of like what New Bremen's doing. I'm, I'm not even sure they have anybody really back, maybe a safety, but that's about as good as a punt as you can get right now. It, absolutely. That was that low line drive. Took a couple of bounces off the turf before it went out of bounds. So now it's going to be New Bremen's turn after their defense turns in a three and out. New Bremen's going to come out for their first offensive possession. 
Well, in watching New Bremen this year, one of the things that I've been really impressed with is quarterback David Holman. He's an all-league player in the MAC, but the offense goes as David Holman goes, and they're going to center things around him tonight. Watch him get a lot of carries. First snap taken off with the, off the left. Holman finds a little bit of space. He's forced out of bounds. Nice first carry. Well, and they've just really built the offense around him. I mean, everything that they do runs through him. The, not only the, the running game, but obviously the passing game as a quarterback. But he's their leading rusher. He's their team leader. When he was out a few weeks ago, it really showed. So having him back and having this nice playoff run is, is really a something. Here's Holman one more time off that left side. Same play, same spot. Able to pick up more yardage this time. And that is going to be a first down. It's the first first down of the night. And like you said, they've run the same play twice. They must see something there. You know, one thing to think about tonight is, you know, with the with the wind and the way things are, you want to run the ball to your sideline. So as a coach, you can see what's happening. So you may see a lot of plays that head to the, uh, the sidelines of where their teams are at. So Holman takes a snap. This time he's going to roll his right. Going to try to air this one out. Got some air underneath that one. I thought that one was going to be high and wide. You saw it moving around. But nice touch by David Holman. Put it right into his receiver's hands. I'll tell you what, Nate, that ball was, uh, <laughs> it looked like a punt. It was end over end. And I'm sure that when David Holman's at practice, no ball that he throws looks like that. But uh, uh, he got a completed pass already. I was uh, kind of shocked to see them do that. But uh, short passes are going to be uh, something that uh, if they're going to throw the ball at all, that's what they're going to have to do like to thank our first down sponsor, Boucher Electric. As New Bremen on that pass picked up another Boucher Electric first down. 8.50 left to go in the opening quarter. New Bremen finding some success. Here comes Holman off the right side. Has a hole, going to work that sideline. Broke one tackle and just started to get a little tripped up, forced out of bounds all the way down at the two-yard line. Great run by David Holman. Well, we've seen him not only on first and second down, of that drive get yards but now he finally got the seam that he wanted and was able to to get a big break and get a big punch here and you're going to see him go tempo here a little bit to try to get Fort Lormy off off guard here first and goal for New Bremen handoff off the right side they're going to work to the corner able to fight through it touchdown New Bremen as you saw number 28 Hunter Schaefer take that carry in and get the first score of the night yeah Hunter Schaefer's a nice player he's uh he's had a great season and I know that uh, him and uh, Homan are a great one-two tandem, but I like the tempo. I like quickly getting the big play and then getting set up and not giving really Fort Warmie an opportunity to set anything up, especially inside the red zone. So now the extra point, another interesting thing to keep an eye on tonight. New Bremen with the wind at their back, though. The extra point is up and good. The Cardinals, they're the first ones on the board after an Allen Davis insurance touchdown. They're on top 7-0. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium here at Sydney High School. Sink, or the New Bremen Cardinals, excuse me. They're the first ones to get onto the board tonight. They're on top seven, nothing, as they had a pretty efficient offensive possession that time. Saw David Holman do a lot of the heavy lifting as he was able to get things done in the air and on the ground. Yeah, you know, he can do a lot of different things. And, you know, if you're Fort Laramie, I think that going into the wind in, in this situation with this wind and this – uh, treacherous conditions, I think it's going to be a problem that, number one, they're down, but now you're going into the wind trying to, to match that score. So it's going to be interesting to see how they answer here. Now Fort Lorme are going to come out and try to come up with an answer. It's their first time out on the field, they struggled a little bit. You saw a couple of high snaps. And you know we feel, feel like we're being a broken record already, but it is hard to understate the challenge of the elements tonight for both of these teams, especially going into the wind as Fort Lormie is. And they went to the air. At pretty good looking ball into the wind, but right into some traffic as a couple of Cardinal defenders were able to get in there and knock that one away. Yeah, uh, number 56, Evan Yink, get out, got in there and made a great play. Um, but uh, great time for Fort Lormie. Had a good job. Maurer had a good job of, uh, of 
looking at the field and finding an open receiver, but just uh, great uh, uh, protection or coverage there by New Bremen. So second and ten coming up for the Redskins. Gonna go to the air one more time. Now it gets flushed out to the right. A lot of space out there. I was about to say green field, but it's pretty white <laughs> right now. But he was still able to pick up a Bush or electric first down. Yeah, Maurer had some uh, some a penetration from Hayden Zeller on the defensive line from the Cardinals, but he just uh, he reacted to it. Like you said, he had plenty of white slash green slash everything else uh, in front of him and uh, got a great first down for Fort Lumley. Much needed right now. We're struggling with the elements up here in the booth, <laughs> just <laughs> losing a bunch of papers. It's, <laughs> it's, it's hey, affecting a little bit of everything we're, tonight. We're playing the game too, Nate, that's for sure. <laughs> Redskins going to keep this one on the ground for a short game. Going to bring up second and eight. Yeah, and I want to apologize to the fans in advance if they hear me sniffing or coughing or yakking. <laughs> <laughs> we're out in the wind and the snow, and we're we're out here just like the fans are. But man, this is this is a this is a great matchup for a November uh, playoff football game here in Ohio. Now we're back in the shotgun. Waiting on the snap, 7.30 left to go here in the opening quarter. Receiver goes in motion. Going to look to get rid of it quickly on a slant. Nice pass and catch that time. Got able to gather that one in. It's going to bring up third and short for Fort Loramie. Yeah, and they, they've not been afraid. I give them a lot of credit. Give Coach Wells a lot of credit for not being afraid here to just uh, go back to, you know, I think that first series they, they were a little bit, I wouldn't say the words conservative, but just, you know, knowing what the situation is, trying to run the ball in this second series, they're like, you know what, we're just going to play our game because I think we're going to have to to win it. Third and short for Fort Lormy. Trying to keep the drive alive. This time, Maurer's going to keep it himself. Going to have a couple of Cardinals there. Can't slip away. and He's going to be dropped for a big loss that time. Yeah, that time he... Once again, he had that pressure uh, from Hayden Zeller, but then he uh, pushed him outside to Kale Tangeman, and he just made a great play. And that's going to put them in another uh, fourth down situation. And I think right now, a new Bremen has that momentum. You can hear the crowd, you can hear the fans, you can hear the sideline. They can feel that with this win behind them, this might be another opportunity here for them to pull ahead. Well, and another big thing about that play with that loss was, you know, fourth and one, if you don't get it, you get stopped on the run there. You know, you probably go for it at midfield there, especially with this win. But this punt, you know, I'll tell you right now, Fort Lorne going through the air, kicking it. They're making it seem like there's no elements out there at all. <laughs> they're proving us wrong because we're talking about the things they can't do, and they're they're doing them. They're throwing the ball. Uh, that was a fantastic punt right into the wind. And uh, you know, like I said a, a few moments ago, I wouldn't even put anybody back. New Bremen didn't have anybody back because. Um, maybe planning for a short punt into the wind, but that's a great field position for Fort Laramie to try to get a stop here. Yeah, and just to quickly finish the thought, New Bremen is a great stand that time because when you drop in for a loss, Fort Laramie probably thinks about going for it there at midfield. And, it, and instead, with that big loss, brings up 4-7-8. and eight, They're forced to punt it, and New Bremen gets the ball back here. Yeah, I think any fourth down that's short tonight, you're going to see team, both these teams go for it. Now Holman cutting through the line. Fort Lormie saying that the fumble, they're saying they have it. No word from the officials yet, but the Redskins definitely think that they have the football. And it looks like it's like they're going to call gonna second down he, here. He was down. So that's going to bring up second and six for the Cardinals. A lucky break for New Bremen. Yeah, you know, it's it's going to be hard to tell for those officials too. They're they're in the elements as well, um, but. Uh, it's a lucky break, like you said, for New Bremen. And I think, you know, any kind of – you're going to see turnovers tonight, Nate. It's just going to happen. I mean, with these uh, – we've almost seen an interception so far. But I think the team that can make the least amount of mistakes is going to be the team that's going to put themselves in the driver's position. Holman hands it off to Schaefer. Schaefer trying to work through the middle. But he is driven back by a couple of those linemen from Fort Lormy. Going to bring up third and long for the Cardinals. Yeah, their defensive line has, has been impressive all year. And uh, not only their defensive line, but uh, Calvin Hoyne, he's the six foot three inch uh, inside linebacker that's made plays time and time again for the Redskins. And uh, now you got New Bremen here in a third down situation, uh, big third down situation early in this game. Clock continues to 
to move. We are under 440 left to go here in this opening quarter. You have the sweep all the way to the right. This one's going to be carried by number one, Aaron Seaman. And Thiemann was able to pick up another Brewster Electric first down for New Bremen. So in the first two possessions, we've seen him be able to move the ball pretty efficiently. Yeah, just, just barely getting first downs, but we've seen in that first uh, possession that they had a couple quick first downs, and then they broke the big one. But Aaron Thiemann makes a great play, and more than that, Nate, he's going without sleeves tonight. He's a, he's a brave man down there. I can tell you, he's a tougher kid than I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> Holman, he's going to carry it himself. Tries to go through contact and to be driven down after about a two-yard gain. Yeah, that was a, a great play by Hoyne once again, just being where he needs to be and also helped out by Jason Siegel there, the uh, the defensive lineman uh, for Fort Loramie, doing a great job, 6'1", 220. Uh, really the anchor and nose tackle of that defensive line. You know, we were talking about Fort Loramie and you know, they're kind of, we were talking about the things that we said they couldn't do, they were doing. But if you don't believe it's about the wind, look at the official right at the ball. He's squatting down holding it because they're worried that the wind <laughs> is going to blow it away down there. Holman going to hand it up off the middle. Schaefer trying to fight for extra yardage. Nice extra effort. Pick up a few more yards to bring up third and manageable. Well, and I think, you know, coaches, what they always try to do is prepare your kids for any and every situation. You cannot replicate this at practice. You cannot replicate these kind of conditions. You can't replicate uh, the bitter cold. I know it was cold this week, but uh, so I think, like I said, a lot of the strategy, a lot of the things that you might have planned are out throughout the week is kind of, uh, I mean, some of them are in place, but you really got to get conservative with some of the things you want to do. This new Bremen faithful, though, letting him hear it. He still turned out. Holman goes off to the left, finds some space, works that sideline before he is forced out but not before he picks up another Busher Electric first down. That's been a play that they've ran about four times. They've ran it three times to the New Bremen sideline and once this way. It's been successful because as soon as they can hook that defensive end, David Holman's been able to, to turn it into another gear and pick up really nice yardage. So New Bremen inching up towards midfield. The 7 nothing lead. Holman doing an excellent job leading this offense here in the early going. Hand it off to Busher. Busher going to work through. Fights off a couple of tackles. I think there's about three or four Fort Lormie Redskins that were able to get their hands on him, but didn't seem to phase him as all phase him at all. And he picked up seven on that carry. Yeah, Hunter Schaefer. I like the way he runs. He's 5'10", 190. I mean, I'm telling you, that's like a tank, Nate. I mean, trying to trying to tackle a guy that's uh, low to the ground but moves very well. Um, he's just been a really, really productive back for them. Second and three, Holman going to hand it off one more time. Going to let Schaefer try to finish this one to see if he can't pick up the first down. And it looks like he's going to be stopped just shy. Bring up third and just about inches, it looks like. You know, I think one of the things you got to think about as a coach is, you know, there's about two minutes to go here in the first quarter. But uh, the reality is, is once this quarter is over with, you're going to switch ends. You're going to go into the win. So I don't know how quickly you want to try to get a strike and get a score so that you don't have to go. You, you have the wind to your back or you just keep, you know, trying to be trying to run the ball and be consistent here. Open takes the snap. going to keep it himself. And he's going to get just enough for the uh, Busher electric first down. Stop the clock here briefly as the chains get set. We are at 145 left to go. Well, that answered my question. They're going to keep it on the ground, and they are getting first down, so you don't want to mess those drives up by doing something uncharacteristic of what you normally would do. And they may have seen that last drive, too. As Holman that time loses a handle. Looks like it was a little RPO action that time, looking to see if maybe handed it off to Thiemann, but decided to pull it down and it slipped right out of his hand so Holman had to fall on it. Going to end up being about a four or five yard loss. Yeah, and that's, that's going to be a tough one. It's going to put them in a really, really tough situation. But you are past the 50. You talked about it, Nate. You know, when you get the fourth down, you're probably looking at uh, going for it here, especially uh, that, you know, you're going to be going against the win here. So we'll see. Here goes the carry. Schaefer breaks free down that right sideline. One man to beat. Tries for the stiff arm, and he is going to get all the way in. 
And I think he's going to have to give the assist to a slick field right there, but <laughs> Schaefer was able to drag the defender into the end zone for the touchdown. I think that's one of the first times I've seen a player hit the five, turn around, and run backwards into the end zone. And that was, like you said, I think the slick field helped him, but they've been running that play over and over with home, and they finally run the counter and were able to get a big play, a big strike, and get a really nice lead here early. So that is another Allen Davis insurance Touchdown, Allen Davis Insurance, your solution provider, specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. Extra point is up, and this one is good. So New Bremen, two possessions, two touchdowns there on top, 14-0. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is made possible by Reese, Myring and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Our instant replays are provided by Holman Interiors. Servicing the Anglais, Mercer, Dark, and Shelby counties, we are ready to partner with you on your home renovations and new build projects. Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. In the elements tonight, these teams <laughs> are playing in conditions that uh, we haven't seen. We've been pretty fortunate with weather here in Ohio. Uh, last week started to get a little bit of it, and they decided that tonight Mother Nature was going to make up for it. <laughs> you know, we didn't even have a rain game this, this year, Nate, and we typically have one or two wet Friday nights. You're right, we've had beautiful weather, and uh, this is uh, making up for all those uh, nights of great 75 degrees and, and, and sun. So you saw New Bremen have to hold on to the football that time to get the kickoff. Fort Lormie does a nice job of scooping that one up. It was a dangerous kick because the way this field is right now, you know, we've seen players slipping. Uh, you know, you, on that last touchdown, pretty much just was able to kind of walk backwards in because the defender was just sliding along with him. So a little bit, it's not as easy as it, excuse me, as it might typically be getting a ball off the field on that bounce, but did a nice job that time bringing it in. And, you know, now you're starting to see the wind whip. You're starting to see the snow blow. I don't see the field getting any better. I mean, I, if anything, it's going to get worse. The colder it gets, the more it's going to be frozen. And, um, you know, having this 14-0 uh, lead for the Cardinals to be able to jump out this early, um, it's, going to be, it's going to be difficult for Fort Loramie to overcome. Yeah, that's one, one, of the, one of the downsides of turf fields. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When, when you, when, especially when it comes to snow and playing like this. They can get very, very slick. So here's Mauer, going to work along the left side, get forced out of bounds after a short game. Yeah, for all the, the great things turf fields are, you know, one of the, the things is is that when you practice on a turf field in the summer, it's about 20 degrees hotter, so you're going through two days, and it feels like it's 90 or 100 degrees out there, but like you said, when it gets cold and it gets slick like this, you have that, you know, that kind of grit from the grass or the mud, but in the turf it just becomes like an ice rink. See footprints getting covered up by the snow continuing to fall, and you know at some point, um, I don't know if you saw the Central Michigan Western Michigan game. <laughs> you know they were trying to find those uh, <laughs> the uh, yard lines as a huge stop behind the line that time. New Bremen did a great job getting through into the backfield and dropped him for a big loss. Yeah, Evan Yank's just been he's been everywhere. I mean he has just. Uh, He's a he's a six foot two, two hundred fifteen pound linebacker. He runs the field, uh, does a great job, and made a big play there. It's probably gonna gonna be the end of the first quarter after that big play. So that is going to bring up third and thirteen for the Fort Laramie Redskins. They'll be in the shadow of their own end zone. They're gonna have to flip the field though. When we return, we'll have the second quarter on WOSN. Welcome back. We thought we were going to come to the end of the first quarter and flip the field, but actually we had a timeout by New Freeman. So four seconds still remains here in the opening quarter. Yeah, I think that was a really good timeout by Coach Schmidt of New Bremen just because now it puts uh, Fort Loramie into the wind still on a long third and 13. It doesn't give them the wind, so I think that had to definitely had something to do with it. We have the clock being reset now. The official saying they want seven seconds left on the clock, so that's reset and ready to go. And you know we've seen the first strategy play trying to use the elements here for, by New Bremen. They don't want Fort Laramie throwing with the wind. Want to throwing into it. Mauer's going to drop back. Going to have to scramble. Has some space. 
And as he slowed down to make a move, you, New Bremen's defense was able to catch up with him, and that's going to bring up fourth down. So now the first quarter is going to come to a close, and we'll step aside and be back with second quarter action on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are sponsored by Speedway Lanes in New Bremen, bringing family and friends together with bowling, fun, and great food for everyone. I'd also like to thank our premier sponsor. The premier sponsor for the New Bremen Cardinals is New Bremen Insurance. We have continued with strong local presence in our community, or support in our community. So second quarter underway. Fourth and four for Fort Laramie. They're going to punt it, but this time they at least do have the win in their favor. Well, that's interesting, Nate, because we've seen some pretty good punts into the wind, and now you have the wind, and I, I don't want to call that a shank, but definitely uh, uh, was a struggle to get that one off uh, for uh, Fort Loramie uh, punter, Kayla Maurer, and uh, it's going to give New Bremen great field position. Now New Bremen is going to come out only 35 yards to go to try to get another score. We've seen them have a ton of success on the ground between – Schaefer and Holman, I'd imagine we're going to continue to see that combo work tonight. Yeah, I think that, you know, if you're New Bremen too, another element, I know it's only the second quarter, but is trying to milk this clock some too. Here's Holman, cuts it back up to the middle, tries to move the pile, continuing, continuing, almost came out of that pile, finally taken down, but not before he picked up another Busher electric first down. It's really a, a simple play. I mean, they're just, they're just reach blocking up front. And uh, he's got Hunter Schaefer um, lead blocking for him, and he's just he's just find, trying to find a gap, and he's able to get yards. And not only did he just get a little crease there and get five six, but then he was able to get that those extra yak yards there and uh, pick up the first down. Holman gonna keep this one himself again. Works off that right side, gonna get taken down after about a two yard game. Is going to be looking at a second and eight. They're just outside the red zone right now. Yeah, and, and I would say field position has been favorable to them tonight. I mean, besides that the drive where you know they were pinned deep on the punt, they've they've been in great uh, shape field position. That's been able, enabling them to get these uh, these uh, first downs because they don't have to pick up you know 15, 16. They can just pick up 10. Holman going to keep it one more time. And the Fort Loramie defense doing a nice job of bottling him up on these last two carries. And it's going to be third and long for the Cardinals. Yeah, that, that kind of looked like there was some confusion on that play, especially on that motion. It looked like that there was um, uh, maybe the motion didn't get quite as far as it needed to, and almost the uh, motion man ran into the snap. They are lucky that Holman kept it. And you talked about it earlier, Nate, but you got third down here, and I don't think this is field goal situation either. <laughs> I think you're you're probably looking at two downs here. Yeah, you got to think New Bremen's definitely in two down territory, so not worried about picking it all up here, as they know that they'll still have fourth down to work. Holman in the shotgun, gonna carry it one more time. Four straight carries for Holman, and this time he's able to pick up a few more yards to make it fourth and short. Yeah, and it's interesting when what what uh, Fort Laramie's doing on the back end. They've They've really went to pure man-to-man -man coverage, and you know I know that uh, that's typically a, a short yardage, you know, coverage where you're going to run short pass plays. And New Bremen did run four receivers vertical, and they're in man-to-man, -man, but they still are trying to run David Holman. And this big fourth down and four, I, I have to think you're going to call Holman's number once again. Fourth and three for New Bremen. They are just inside the red zone. Had success running with Holman as he's ran it four straight times. They've also had some success with Schaefer, but we are going to have a timeout first as New Bremen wants to take a timeout and talk about it. So that is going to be their second Speedway Lanes timeout. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's first down sponsor is Busher Electric. Busher Electric is a full-service electrical contractor servicing the areas and communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. 
big fourth down coming up for the Cardinals. Still a lot of football left to be played, John, but you almost feel like this is one of those must stops for Fort Laramie. Yeah, I think so. I think you, you got to get it. You got to get some momentum, and, and New Bremen's had the momentum. This is what you you need a big stop here. Big push by that Laramie defense, and it looks like they got him. Let's see where they mark him down, and that is going to be a turnover on downs. So the Fort Laramie Redskins defense comes up huge, able to gather in Holman that time and get the ball back for their offense. Yeah, get, give a shout out to Ethan Kaiser there, the six foot, 175 pound defensive back, making just a really good play. And they, they tried to run Holman on the same play they've ran all night, different formation that time, but uh, ran him on the outside. And uh, like you said earlier, Nate, is this time to get the big play? It was the time, and that was a huge momentum shift for the Redskins. So let's see if Fort Lormie's able to do anything now that they got a little bit of this momentum going back their way. Nine minutes left to go here in the first half. Mauer. Looks to drop back, going to try to air it out. Throws it across the middle of the field. This one's a little high. Looks like it might have been tipped by, uh, let's see, who was that? Number 25, Dylan Bombarder, Bumbauer, Bambauer. There we go. The wind's got me. <laughs> <laughs> Mouth doesn't want to work the way that it normally does. But Dylan able to get his hand on that one, tip that one away. And fortunate for Fort Lormier that just kind of fluttered down to the feet of one of the defenders. Yeah, he overthrew him, and you have to wonder if the change of directions with the change of wind, you know, is, is throwing him, is throwing Caleb Maurer off because he's, you know, had to throw it differently into the wind, and now he's got the wind. So Maurer one more time, going to look to air it out. Going to throw it deep, has a receiver, it came free. Just a little bit too much air under that one. If they were able to connect, that was definitely going to go for six. Yeah, that was a, a great throw by Maurer. He was looking for Logan Eilerman, and he had him across the middle, but uh, just a little overthrown, and now you're in a third and 10 situation. Uh, Lormie's not afraid to, to open it up here. They got receivers open too, and you have to wonder if uh, at some point, you know, they can complete a pass and get a big gain here, it'll it'll pay off. Well, you gotta wonder too, that change of direction now with the offense, they were just waiting on it to try to open them things up. First two possessions going on this way on the field, they immediately went to the air. So Maurer gonna drop back. Going to look to throw for a third time. Can't find anybody. Scrambles to his left. Arm excuse me, to his right. Great defense by the Cardinals, though, and he just has to throw this one away. Yeah, he had he had pressure from Dylan Bambauer. And uh, sometimes those uh, as a as a young guy, it's hard to teach those guys to just throw it away. But you know they want to make plays, especially in a, a game of this magnitude. But Maurer did the smart thing and just throwing it away and allowing. Uh, his team did not have a turnover and hopefully can get better field position than this uh, last time that they were in punt situation. So unfortunately, the Fort Lormie offense not able to take advantage of the turnover on downs as they're going to have to punt this one away. 8.48 left to go here in the half. Fumbled snap, able to get rid of it. And actually a pretty good kick, ends up going out of bounds. And it looks like they're going to mark it out of bounds at the 45 yard line. So. What looked like it could have been disaster ended up being uh, safe, but we do have a flag on the play. We'll see what that call is. Well, they ran into the punter, but that was because of the snap, so the official threw it late. Fifteen yard roughing the kicker penalty as the punter got ran into, knocked down, and the officials are, say that it was I guess late, um, the botch snap didn't really come into play that time, but the big story of the personal foul, it's an automatic first down. Yeah, Fort Laramie caught a break there, and you know, I, I don't like that rule. I think that any time a punter makes a football move, whether he's, he's fielding a bad snap or he tries to run, I think roughing the punter has to go out the window because you're just playing defense at that point. I think that's what happened. The New Bremen uh, defensive line seen him fumbling with the ball and just ran into him. Well, to me, too, it's almost like it's uh, you're going for a fumble at that point. So everybody's diving. Everybody's trying to get get on top of that. And when, when that happens with a fumble, you have a lot of bodies crashing into each other. There's a lot of heavy contact. But either way, Fort Lormie catches a break. And on their first play, you see Maurer not able to uh, run free that time. He gets tripped up for a short loss to bring up second and 12. Yeah, defensive lineman Ben Saylor made a great play. Maurer's doing a really good job of uh, scrambling. There's, there's, I wouldn't say there's a lot of pressure, but he's able to, to find uh, ways to step up in the pocket, but Ben Saylor did a nice job of containing him there. So right now, Fort Lormie's trying to get things going through the air. This is the fifth straight pass attempt and not able to connect on it. 
Jones. That one looked like that one was knocked away, and that's going to bring up third and 13 for the Redskins. Yeah, Evan Yank, he's just, he's everywhere. I mean, he's making plays at linebacker. He's making plays uh, in the backfield. And did a great job of using a technique play where he brought his right arm over the receiver and kept that distance, didn't have his left arm on him, and made a big uh, second down play. So another big third down for Fort Lorme. We weren't able to con convert the last one. Have another opportunity on this drive to see if they can't get things going. Mauer drops back, he's going to throw. A lot of space in front of him, going to get rid of it. This time it goes behind the receiver, gets uh, deflected, ends up into the hands of New Bremen. And a great return that time as number 14. Grant Dickey is able to come up with that interception. And you mentioned it, John. You thought turnovers could be a big part of this game. And we see our first one right there. Well, and I think that the tricky part is that, you know, you're going to see a lot of def uh, passes that go through the hands of the receivers. Even if you have a good pass and, uh, and it's where it needs to be, it's just tough to catch the ball. And, and the wind, the, the snow, everything blowing in your face. So you've seen a lot of deflection so far. And, uh, Grant Dickey did a great job of just being Johnny on the spot. He just had to pick the ball off, and looks like we had a holding penalty on the return, but uh, I think New Bremen's okay with that, and now they're going to get really good starting field position. So ironically enough, New Bremen is back to right about where they would have had the ball if the punt would have stood earlier. They are just shy of the 45-yard line. Holman pulls this one in, going to take it himself, looking for a couple of blockers. Moves around, goes across the 40-yard line, and finally taken down after a nice gain on first down. Yeah, just grinding yards. And, um, you know, I, one of the things I notice is that typically when you watch teams on film, you, you can see how fast guys are and how they move side to side. And these guys do look like they're on ice skates. I mean, they're not <laughs> they're not running as fast as they typically would. You, you see some tiptoeing, and that's not because they're afraid to fall. It's just because they're just trying to get some grip underneath them. Well, and I think that would contributed to the interception as well. Yeah. You know, Maurer went to throw it. His receiver used to be able to put his foot in the ground and stop, just kind of kept going and had to reach back behind him. You see Schaefer now he take this one up. And he's going to pick up what looks like, yep, and that's going to be another Busher Electric first down. Yeah, and these uh, these first downs are they're demoralizing for a Fort Laramie defense. They I felt like New Bremen's defense has been on or offense has been on the field most of the night. Fort Laramie's defense has been on the field a lot of the night, and they're just eating up yards here. So Dickey and Teeman out wide. Schaefer is going to take the inside handoff. Going to work on that right side. He's going to keep going, keeping the legs turning, carrying guys with him. Schaefer has just been a wrecking machine for this Fort Laramie defense. I like that counter play. It's they're pulling the backside guard, and they're also uh, having their, their sniffer. They're kind of like a tight end in the backfield back. Uh, come in and kick out. And uh, with the threat of home and on the edge, they have to over-pursue, and that's given Hunter Schaefer a nice uh, lane to run through. New Bremen now picking up tempo, trying to play fast. Holman's going to keep it himself. Goes right through the middle, nice hole. Going to pick up just enough as he's able to carry it into about the 22-yard line, and that's going to be another Busher Electric first down. Yeah, one of the people I'm impressed with is uh, defense or offensive tackle Carter Elking for New Bremen. He's a six-foot... 193-pound offensive tackle, play some tight end too at times, but you see him here just making some really impressive plays. Schaefer one more time. This time not as much room, only picks up about a gain of one or two on first down. The good news is it does look like the snow has stopped. <laughs> the wind is still a problem for them down there on the field, but at least they don't have the snow blowing and you know maybe the field won't continue to get as covered up for them. Yeah, and I'd, I'd really like to know you know if you're playing are you cold you, you have to be I mean maybe not as cold as we are standing up here but you got to be cold so how, you know how is the the weather really affecting them on the field. See Holman carrying it one more time bring up third and long for the Cardinals. Well, and as the wind whips, you know, the temperatures will drop tonight. And I, I think that, uh, you know, it's going to only get colder. So those conditions down there, uh, you can see the Loramie sideline, the guys that are maybe the subs or the second teamers, you can see them huddled down there trying to stay warm. But the guys on the field look like they're all right. They got one of those propane heaters down there. I don't see anybody around <laughs> it. If they're not going to use it, maybe we can get them to bring that up here for us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 
And as we're going to have a whistle prior to the play, as the handoff was going to the Seaman, but before then it was a false start on New Bremen. They're going to get pushed back five yards. So now it's going to make this third down a little bit more tricky, but we talked about it earlier. I'd imagine that we're in two-down territory for the Cardinals. Yeah, you're going to have to be, and I think the biggest thing is, is that uh, Holman and Schaefer, they've just been able to pick up yards after contact. I mean, they... they a lot of three to four yard gains have turned into eight and nine yard gains. And I think even in this situation here, you're not trying to get the you know the 12 yards. I think you're trying to get six, you're trying to get seven to give yourself a, a good opportunity on fourth down. Holman waits for the snap. Gonna hand it off to Schaefer on the inside. Schaefer got spun around, was able to keep his legs moving. So a pretty decent gain that time of about seven yards, but they're still gonna bring up fourth and seven for the Cardinals. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm typically wrong, just so you know, Nate, so just ignore me when I say this, but I think this might be a good time for a pass play. I mean, you've seen them run, 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 run. You have fourth and eight here. They're in man coverage, so if you can just get a guy one-on-one -on -one and maybe beat him, maybe a pass play wouldn't be a bad opportunity here. Empty backfield. Holman is going to do just that. It's going to look to pass. Airs this one out up the middle. Nice conversion that time. John, you called it. As New Bremen goes to the air and they're able to pick up the first down. Well, the, the key there was is that it was man-to-man, -man, but they did have the quarterback spy dropping in, in a zone coverage, and uh, uh, Holman was, did a great job of uh, putting it right where it needed to be. A hurry up offense for the Cardinals. Handoff to Schaefer. He's not able to get too far that time. As New Bremen continues to be successful running the ball here tonight. I've only seen a couple of pass plays out of them. They've worked when they've gone to the air. They've become in big spots. They've done a nice job of picking their opportunities, but haven't really needed it with the success they're having on the ground. Yeah, unofficially, they are two for two, and that's because I'm not really keeping stats, but I know they've thrown <laughs> the ball twice, and they've completed them both, so they've been, they've been uh, very proficient with that tonight. Holman pulls this one back, going to keep going. Took a big hit right at the line of scrimmage, was able to keep his feet, bounced out to the right before being taken down just inside the five-yard line. Yeah, and you can see that clock moving. That's what they want right now. And, and not just because it's cold and want to get the game over, but I think that, you know, with this lead, and especially if they can push this lead to 21 points, you want to eat clock. You want to get your kids out of here uh, healthy and feeling good about the game that they've played. Third and goal for New Bremen. Holman going to keep it himself one more time. Tries to work through the middle. He's going to get pushed back. It looks like they're only going to give him a, I don't even even sure if they're going to say, I think maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage, it looks like. So it's going to bring up fourth and goal from the four-yard line for New Bremen. 2.20 left to go here in the first half. Let's see what they dial up. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, a timeout here on, on either side, especially if uh, New Bremen lines up offensively in a formation. You know, maybe Fort Lorm, they haven't called a timeout yet, but it's looking like New Bremen's probably looking at a timeout here. Yeah, with play clock coming down to 10 seconds, the offense going to the sidelines. They're going to let this one wind all the way down before they call this timeout. And here it is. So New Bremen is going to take their third and final speedy lanes or speedway lanes at timeout. We're going to step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Timeouts are presented by Speedway Lanes in New Bremen, bringing family and friends together with bowling, fun, and great food for everyone. New Bremen coming out of the last Speedway Lanes timeout of the half have decided to kick a field goal. The wind has died down at least from what it looks like when you're looking at the uh, flags on the field. This kick is up, and it is good. So New Bremen able to tack on three more to make this a 17-0 game with 147 left to go. Yeah, Hunter Schaefer did a good job of moving from running back to kicker, and it was a short field goal, but that was probably what the conversation was about and what do they want to do, and I think at this point they're right. Get points, especially if you have a kicker who can kick into this win. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN.
Tonight's scoreboard is made possible by Reese, Myring & Company CPAs, helping small business navigate their financial future. Take a look at them. Reese, Myring & Company CPA scoreboard. New Bremen has opened up a nice lead, 17-0, 17 points here in the first half. And that's very impressive considering the conditions we're in as the wind is definitely picking up now. <laughs> you well, may be able to hear it in the headphones. Well, you know, and, and typically wind will calm down at night. You don't have to be a meteorologist to know that. And Nate, it's not calmed down at all. If anything, it's picked up and it's whipping us up here too. I feel like we just talked about maybe it was dying, so it was like, okay, I guess that's a challenge and decided <laughs> to pick back up. I should have said it a little bit quieter. <laughs> Nice tackle by the Cardinals as they were able to get downfield quickly. As the Redskins are going to come out. They got a minute 41 to work with. And just even if you don't score, just signs of being able to move your offense you think would give them a little bit of momentum going into that locker room. Yeah, and I think you have to you have to be aggressive here with the wind um, and not being on the scoreboard. They, they haven't been afraid to throw the ball downfield, but the momentum, Nate, just like you said, getting that momentum, getting something positive to build on is important. Maurer looking to throw one more time. Has a receiver open, and this time just went right through his hands as he was trying to look upfield to see where the defense was before he gathered that one in. Yeah, hit Logan Eiler, man. He's been a pretty consistent receiver this year. He's had a really good season and uh, made some big plays for the Redskins. But that time, he looked a little upfield. And you can see New Bremen right away being in a cover for uh, more of a prevent defense there. A lot of these under routes are going to be open. So he's going to get another opportunity here soon. You know, and here's the other thing. Now it's second and 10, clock not moving. You imagine Fort Lorme you're going to continue to throw. If they have some more incompletions, New Bremen might have a chance to score again. Here goes another throw as Tiemann comes through with a <laughs> huge hit. Highlight reel at that time as he did a great job of timing that up. Yeah, I watched Aaron Tiemann a few weeks back, and besides David Holman and Hunter Schaefer, Aaron Tiemann's the man. I mean, he was uh, making really big plays offensively, but you can see defensively why he's kind of their lockdown corner, that guy that they depend on. And not only does he cover guys well, he tackles well too. Third and eight. Maurer back to throw one more time. Has his receivers able to connect. Able to slip through a couple defenders before being taken down. 46 yard line. So the are going to have to hurry up. They do still have three timeouts. Yeah, and like I said, that was Eilerman's chance. To, to They ran the same play, just had him on the different side of the field and made the catch that time for a big first down. Maurer scans the field. Going to throw it deep. And we're going to have a flag that time. As got there a little early, did the uh, defensive player. So Fort Lormie now is going to have a couple of back-to-back -back big plays. And they've been able to march down into Cardinal territory. Yeah, the timing's off for everybody. I mean, the timing is off for the receivers and the quarterback. The timing's also off for the defensive backs. And it's hard to judge when to react on a ball. And, and you do those kind of drills during the week at practice. And right now, it's tough. So. They got there a little early, and you talked about getting those that momentum, doing some things here, and they definitely have some positive things going on here right before the, the end of the first half. 41 seconds left to go. They do still have all three timeouts. Four Lormy at the 40-yard line. Maurer takes a snap. Going to look deep. Looked like he was going to try to load up to throw that one deep, but as he stepped up, he gets taken down, and we're going to have a Fort Lormy timeout. 31 seconds left to go here in the half. Fort Lormie takes their first Speedway Lanes timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdowns are sponsored by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. Three seconds were added to the clock, so 34 seconds left to go. Fort Loramie second and nine from the 39-yard line. Maurer has some pressure, has to run away to the right. Decides to pull it down himself, working to the sideline, and gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 26 seconds. Yeah, and, and that's something that he's been able to consistently do tonight, but I think one of the things that New Bremen did that time, I think they have to do defensively, is start bringing a little bit of pressure. If you let Maurer sit back there and I know you got guys in coverage, and you know uh, 
you probably have more guys in coverage than they have receivers, but Maurer's a good enough athlete to make plays, so I think you, you have to start looking at bringing some pressure too. The last Maurer run was good for another Busher Electric first down, so first and 10 for Fort Lormy. They are at the 28-yard line. Maurer. That time it looked like the ball slipped out of his hands as he had a receiver open, but not able to get as much behind it as he normally does. So New Bremen undercuts the throw and comes up with their second turnover of the day. Yeah, Ben Saylor, we've said his name before. and uh, That ball was just underthrown, and Saylor made a great play and stepped up forward and stopped that drive by Fort Loramie. And uh, if you're New Bremen, I think you take a knee and you get out of here and you feel good about what you've done in the first half. I'd like to thank our instant replay sponsor, Holman Interior. Holman Interior, servicing the Auglaise, Mercer, Drake, and Shelby counties. We are ready to partner with you and your home renovations or new build projects. 18 seconds left to go. New Bremen on top, 17 nothing. So coming out of the last interception, Holman is just going to knee it. So New Bremen's going to head to the locker room on top, 17 to nothing, as they've been able to get it done on the ground. When they have gone to the air, they found success as well, and a couple of turnovers has aided to them keeping Fort, uh, Fort Lormy off the scoreboard. We'll step aside, and when we return, we'll have the second half on WOSN. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium here at Sydney High School. Second half just about underway. I'd like to thank our scoreboard sponsor. It's made possible by Reese Myron and the company CPAs, helping small business navigate their financial future. Halftime got a little interesting. Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. And, you know, the, the wind came back with some vengeance. We got some more snow during that time. Um, things have calmed down slightly here, but... It's going to make for an interesting uh, second half. We saw the weather have a big uh, impact there in that first half, but New Bremen still found ways to get on the scoreboard. Yeah, they did, and, and really David Holman and Hunter Schaefer were the two reasons that uh, they were able to do that. Some great blocking up front and some unselfish blocking from receivers, and I think you're going to have to stay with that strategy with a 17-point lead. I think it, you know, in a cold game like this, you want this clock moving. You want to try to get out of here and uh, get out of here with uh, everybody healthy. Bad snap, Holman able to gather it in, and smart heads-up play by David Holman as he knew he wasn't going to be able to get positive yardage but knew that he was far enough outside that tackle box, so bo tackle box wouldn't be able to get a intentional grounding, just threw it out of bounds. Yeah, and, and you know he was he's pretty lucky there because typically if it's a running play, and it, it's hard to see if it was a, a called running play or not, but typically you have linemen downfield, but he didn't even have that, so uh, he really uh, saved himself there, and looks like the officials are going to – talk this, uh, maybe the clock over as well. So they're going to reset the clock. It's going to go back to 11.44. The clock must not have stopped as that ball went out of bounds. Temperature dropping here in Sydney, getting a little bit colder, a little windier. Still having some clock issues. They're trying to communicate with the press box, but the wind definitely isn't helping anything. Yeah, and it's one of those situations where, you know, we were kind of in the press box uh, at halftime, Nate. That's buttoned up. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> There's no open windows, so that somebody's got to communicate that to those guys. And I don't think they're going to open a window anytime soon. So we are all set now. Holman, second and 10 for the Cardinals. He's going to keep this one himself, going to carry it. Off to that right side, and the Lormie defense was right there to gather him in after a short game. Yeah, and if you're Fort Lormie, you know, you, you make some halftime adjustments. I think the adjustments are that you just got to start executing. I mean, I don't think you scheme-wise can do anything different, especially this late into the season. I mean, it's it's week 14. So scheme-wise, isn't gonna you're not going to change things, but just execution on uh, not only tackling well, but up front making sure that you're, you're filling those gaps. So quick snap, Holman going to try to get it outside, work up the sideline, picks up good yardage. He's forced out of bounds, but that's going to be enough for a Busher Electric first down. Yeah, and Hunter Schaefer did a great job of uh, seal getting that seal on the outside and just turning enough so that Holman could turn it up inside and get the first down. So 
first first down of the second half for New Bremen. As they are picking up right where they left off. When it's been it's been a pretty simplistic idea, you know, home and right, Schaefer left, uh, getting three to four yards at a time and just milking uh, these short gains into first downs, you know, third and four, third and five, getting those first downs when they need them to. That was another short run by David Holman. They picked up about four on that. So it's going to be a, actually a three-yard game, so it's going to be second and a seven for New Bremen. Holman gets a man in motion. And we're going to have a false start. They're going to say, looks like the left guard maybe jumped a little early. So five yard penalty for New Bremen is going to push it back to make this second and 12. Yeah, and I, you know, considering the circumstances, I think feel like both teams have played a pretty good game. Not a lot of penalties, not a lot of miscues, but I guess you would expect that teams making it this far in the playoffs and you know playing in these regional finals that uh, they're disciplined teams and you can see that from both Fort Lormie and New Bremen they know what they're doing they got quality players and quality coaching. Ullman one more time has some space looking for a blocker shakes one tackler it's taken down right at midfield nice carry get some of that penalty yardage back to make this third and five. You know, one of the things I like about David Holman is that uh, you know, he's got the speed, he's got the size and the strength, but he's not an impatient runner. He waits for things to develop. He waits for blocks to be made. You know, if there's a kick out, he waits for it to happen. And then you can see him cut it inside. He just has a really good awareness of the field and where to run and how to get those first downs. So under 10 to go here in the third quarter. New Bremen driving one more time. Holman going to hand it off to Schaefer, up the middle. Schaefer has some room, and he picks up a first down, big third down run that time by Schaefer. Yeah, Hunter Schaefer does a good job of just, uh, you really haven't seen, besides the one big run that he scored on early, you haven't seen any big runs out of him, but just finding the holes and finding those, those big plays. So New Bremen in the hurry up one more time. Here's Holman. And when he gets out on that edge, he is dangerous, and he has another big pickup that time. This time it's going to be for nine yards. Yeah, and, you know, they went tempo right after the first down to try to maybe catch Fort Lormie off guards. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, in these situations you got to look at is not a lot of passing. So, who, you know, who is, is uh, making plays out there? Aaron Teeman just out there blocking his butt off, you know, as a receiver. Love to see that out of guys, you know, being unselfish and making plays. Holman going to work on the inside, trying to force. It's going to depend on placement, but it looks like they may give him the first down. We'll see. It looked like the top official there is just beyond the sticks, and they'll have to, if they don't measure it, they'll have to make a call here. And they are going to measure, so we'll have an official timeout here for a measurement. As New Bremen, they've really um, just come out here in the second half and picked up right where they left off. We saw them pretty much do whatever they wanted in that first half, had success running the ball up the middle on the sides. They didn't go to the air a lot, but when they did, they were able to connect. We even saw a field goal go in. You know, they got everything going. Yeah, they and they're a complete team, and, you know, one of the things that – uh, you know, they can play in the MAC, so, you know, they're going up against the Versailles, the Marion Locals, the Coldwaters each and every week, you know. So a 6-4 and four record or a 7-3 and three record in the MAC is very misleading. They're a solid team from top to bottom. And, you know, with being in Division 7, um, it's going to be interesting to see kind of how it shakes out because, you know, Marion Local moving to 6, uh, you know, New Bremen really has a, a great opportunity here to, to get another state championship. So the measurement came up just short. We're going to have a third and inches for the Cardinals. Here's Holman going to keep it himself. Bounces it outside. He's able to get by two different defenders. Picks up the first down and then some. Continues to move and gets almost all the way up to the 20-yard line. Drug down just short at the 22. 
and that is going to be a Busher Electric first down. Yeah, Holman did a great job of breaking some tackles. Fort Lormie had some defenders there to uh, stop it. They had it defended well, and uh, he just broke tackles and used his feet and used his athletic ability to get another big Cardinal first down. This time it's going to be a handoff off to, Sh to Schaefer. Schaefer works up the middle. He gets those tough yards as he just continues to drive right through that line of Fort Lormie. Yeah, and it's, you know, I, I said it earlier, but it's demoralizing for a defense when you're just out there and they're just getting five, they're getting six, and then you maybe are in a third and seven situation. You feel like you got a shot, and then they get a first down. So um, ball control, they've held on to the ball. It's almost four minutes here in the third quarter. Fort Laramie's got to be itching to get back on the field offensively, and, and Abreman just keeps hanging on to the football. Second and six. Hand off to Busher one more time. Excuse me, that was Schaefer. Schaefer continues to turn the legs as he picks up another Busher electric first down. He's been running the ball so well. I'm just, <laughs> can, you know, him and him and Busher electric right now are just like one in my mind because when he touches it, it's a Busher electric first down. He gets another one right there as they are inside the five yard line. Oh, he is electric. I mean, he gets out there, and I love, I love the spin moves. That time, like the touchdown earlier, he ran about five yards backwards. Here's Holman trying to drive. See his teammates continuing to push, continuing to push. Fort Lormie trying to hold on. Were they able to keep him out? No, as that is going to be an Allen Davis insurance touchdown. And that is six more points for New Bremen. There's a late flag there, Nate. I'm not sure if there was some extracurriculars going on after the play or something happening, you know, uh, within the play. It looks like there maybe something happened after the, the play was over. Well, now it looked like one of no, it is going to be a touchdown. It looked like one official, a face mask on the defense. That's obviously going to be declined as New Bremen got the ball and they came right down. A nice, long, sustained drive. Took a lot of time off the clock as well. Finally able to punch it into the end zone. Yeah, and that they couldn't have drew that drive up any better. Uh, first down after first down after first down. Home and left, Schaefer right. You know, now they got a big lead here. Going to push it to 24. The extra point is good, bringing the score 24 to nothing. And we will step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our instant replays are provided by Holman Interior, servicing the Auglaize, Mercer, Dark, and Shelby counties. We are ready to partner with you on your home renovations or new build projects. I'd like to thank our touchdown sponsor, Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider, specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. Nate Garlock alongside John Zerby. You know, kind of much of the same as we saw New Bremen come down. Fort Lormie really struggled in the first half. They're going to get an opportunity here to see what they can do. You got to think, you got to come away with points on this drive. Yeah, I, I agree. And you do have the wind to your back. And, you know, they have not been afraid to throw the football. But, Nate, I think this is kind of do or die here. It's a situation where points are hard to come by. And at this point, you've got to get some points. You know, and they're starting with the wind at their back. But that also means in the fourth quarter, they're going to be going into it and make that uh, those trips down the field much harder. So you've got to come away with something, get something going here in this third. And I think that the, the fear is that you have to be aggressive. You have to maybe even throw the ball downfield, but we've seen you know turnovers when they've done that. And uh, you, you want to protect the football, but I just think you're in a situation now being down you know three plus scores here that you're just going to have to be aggressive and make uh, what you can out of it. All right, seven sixteen left to go here in the third quarter. Fort Lormie, as Mauer drops back to throw, going to scramble to his right, has some room. He's going to pull it down, try to pick up some yardage. And a nice run by Mauer on first down. Yeah, Mauer's just done a great job tonight. I mean, he's he's been pretty much everywhere, uh, making plays, and you know, really, uh, even though there's a big lead by the the Redskins, he's he's kept them in the game. I mean, it's kept it close by you know, using his feet and. Uh, uh, making a big play right there. And I think if you're Bremen, you know, you're only bringing three guys um, and, and you're trying to spy him, but he's just so athletic that he's just making plays on his own. Second and one for the Redskins. 
Bauer back in the shotgun as he has been all night long. Going to throw again. Has a receiver open. Nice catch that time. And able to get out to just shy of the 50-yard line. Yeah, Logan Eilerman doing a great job tonight of finding the gap in the zone. I mean, he's done a good job of just sitting in the zone, and he's made a couple of big catches tonight, not only made the catch, but then gotten a pretty good uh, yardage after the catch as well. Yeah, they've been throwing a lot, um, especially since that second quarter. And Eilerman ha has had some opportunities, just have a couple of missteps. It's that time it looked like Maurer threw that one off his back foot as it goes high and out of bounds. You know, a lot of it is just Ireland kind of settling down. We saw the one where he had space, but he took his eye off it before he caught it. Uh, and, and just a couple other little things. But there, you saw he waited, had it in. And then once he gets those in, he has good speed. He has good size, able to pick up good yardage for his team. Yeah, he, he's a nice player. He's been an impact player this year. And I think that's, that's the tough part now is you're going to want to run guys deep. But the opening is underneath. And you're going to have to just be patient enough to throw those underneath routes. More time this time out to the flats, but not able to gather that one in. And it was off the hands. Just kind of falls harmlessly out to the turf. Yeah, and it puts him up in a third and 10 situation. And, um, you know, we, we talked about it before, but we thought Fort Learn to come out and try to run the football. Be, besides the first quarter a little bit, they've thrown the ball every time. I mean, uh, Mauer's done a lot with his own feet, but, you know, called running plays, we've seen far and few in between. So third and 10. You wonder if this is four down territory already for the Redskins. Mauer drops back. Going to let this one go. Nice throw. Momentum carried it backwards, though. So not quite the game that they were looking for, but still a positive play as this is going to bring up fourth and probably about six. Yeah, they run the out route. I think that's a good play call. It's the underneath route. It's a far throw, but. Like you said, the momentum carried him backwards, and Hayden Zeller was there to make a great play for New Bremen. And, you know, now we're looking at this big first fourth down of the second half. Now we're looking at fourth and seven, trying to convert for his team to keep this drive alive. Take a look at the sidelines, wait for the call to come in. Mauer, He'll scan the field. Has an opening, going to try to take it. Goes to that left side, gets to the sticks, and picks up a big first down for Fort Lawrence. Yeah, what a big play. I mean, uh, had great protection, I would say. He, he's back there. He's scanning the field. He's looking through his first read, his second read. And then finally, just does a really good job of, uh, of breaking contain and, and getting out there and making the, the first down, you know. And I'm not one to second-guess coaches because, you know, I know how it is to, to be out there and, uh, make plays, but I'm just a little surprised New Bremen's still coming with three. I mean, I think that the uh, Maurer has done enough tonight. He, he has been very elusive and uh, has made big plays for the Redskins. So fresh set of downs after the Busher Electric first down by Maurer. They are in to Cardinal territory. Maurer going to try to run it. Nope, he's going to let this one fly. Gets it just over the outstretched arms of the defender. Couldn't quite make the grab, but that was a great throw, almost a great catch as well. Yeah, just over the head of Ben Saylor playing coverage there and doing a nice job. He was uh, looking for a receiver uh, near, on the near sideline um, and just couldn't bring it in. And, you know, now you're still in that second down situation. Now we're back in the shotgun. 5-11 left to go here in the third quarter. Second and 10. Now we're going to air it out one more time. Nowhere to go with it, so he tried to get it down to his running back, but the Cardinal defense was right there. Big hit that time. Knocked that one loose to make it incomplete. Yeah, Ben Saylor on the last play about made the pick, and this time he didn't fall for the screen. And, you know, we haven't seen many screens tonight, and... Uh, Maybe that's why, because Ben Saylor did a great job of reading that play and then making a huge stop for New Bremen. So another third down opportunity for the Redskins. We'll see if New Bremen brings any extra pressure. Three receivers out, and we're going to have the first timeout 
of the second half for Lorm. You want to take a timeout and talk about it. So that is our first Speedway Lanes timeout. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are presented by Speedway Lanes in New Bremen, bringing family and friends together with bowling, fun, and great food for everyone. Fort Lormy coming out of the timeout, trying to convert on third down. Take a look at the sidelines. Now they're ready. Three receivers out. Mauer going to look to the right side. Lobs it to his receiver, not able to connect. As he had Eilerman out there. But we have a flag come in late. Not yeah. sure who that penalty is going to be on. I was looking downfield. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it might have been Jason Siegel, number 64, uh, for the Redskins. And I could have got that wrong. It's kind of hard to see their numbers. But uh, just some frustration penalty uh, there at the end. At the end of the play, he was on top of the uh, New Bremen defensive lineman. And, Got that little extra push there at the end, and it was right in front of the official, which is a bad spot to do that. Well, any thoughts of going for it on fourth down are gone now as it's going to be fourth and 25, and the punt team's going to come out for Fort Loramie. Yeah, and this this is a, a tough spot for Loramie because, you know, you've got the wind. You want to throw the ball, but you're in really fourth and 25. It's just, it's just probably not a good idea to go for it, and punt's probably the safest thing you can do. Punt is away, it's not a good one. As it went off the side of his foot, it's gonna go out of bounds. And New Bremen one more time is gonna have an excellent field position. Well, and if you're New Bremen, you've just been fortunate tonight. You've, you've had really all the, the balls bounce your way and you know things happen for you and, and you've been able to get good field position and I don't think there's any um, there's any secret that's what's, what's gonna happen on this drive, Nate. I think it's gonna be David home and left, Hunter Schaefer right, and you know, with this 24 to nothing lead, you can uh, you can be conservative here and, and run the ball and make sure that you're just uh, trying to uh, make plays and and uh, continue to, to get better here and get that momentum. 451 left to go in the quarter. Schaefer's gonna take the handoff. Gonna work off that right side, picks up about three. You know, and I think if you're Fort Laramie at this point, you know, you've, you've had a great season and, you know, it's looking like, you know, halfway through this third quarter that, you know, this season may be coming to an end, but you, you got you to gotta keep playing as hard as you possibly can and not let your composure go. And I know Coach Wells does a good job of having a disciplined team, and, and they've had, like I said, a great year, but uh, continuing to play at a high level even though you're down 24 points. Here's Holming. One more time to Schaefer. Schaefer, looked like he tried to leap over somebody. I have no idea how he got through that line and still picked <laughs> up positive yardage. He's he's just amazing. I mean, he really is. He, uh, you know, when you you think that uh, he's down, he runs backwards. When you think that he's uh, you can't see him, he's jumping over you know defenders. And like I said earlier, as impressive as David Holman is, Hunter Schaefer is uh, equally as impressive. Play calling has been excellent for the Cardinals tonight. You know, they've been running. You know, we talked about pretty much Holman and Schaefer. Uh, occasionally, we've seen a jet sweep with Seaman, but they've done a nice job of keeping things not predictable, even if they're running the same thing two or three times in a row, as that pass is just off the mark for the first incompletion of the game for Holman. But they've been doing a good job of disguising that. And when you think you know what they're going to do, they do a good job of changing it, going the other way. Holman's had great vision tonight to know when to bounce to the outside. You know, they, they really haven't looked weak in any area. No, and I, and I think that the biggest thing is they've just changed their formations. I think they've, they've ran pretty much the same plays, maybe five or six plays, but changing the formations and even that play right there, I don't think that that was a called play. I think that uh, David Holman might have seen something there coverage-wise and, and audible at the line. but. They've, they've kept it consistent, but but also, like you said, mixed it up enough to, to keep Fort Laramie on their toes. So the first punt of the night, or maybe the second for the Cardinals, as this one is going to be downed 
at the 27-yard uh, line. So a good stand by the Fort Laramie defense. First time in a while they've been able to get New Bremen off of the field. And that's kind of an answer there. I mean, you know, you, you try to get small wins in this situation. You try to get, you know, a first down here, a stop there, a good special teams play here, and that's a big stop, a good series for the Redskins, and maybe they can get something going here on offense. So now Maurer. As Fort Lormie is going to stay in the air, this one's going to go out of bounds, a short pickup, but some good positive yardage on first down. Yeah, and these, these uh, just a quick hitch to the outside, and, and that's, you know, it, it's, a, it's tough because that's what you need right now. You need just some momentum. You need some confidence, but being down 24, Nate, you are running out of time. I mean, at some point you're going to have to just get super aggressive uh, and try to get the ball downfield so you can get some points on the scoreboard. Mauer, pressure coming. Able to get rid of it, almost picked off as Maurer had no choice but to throw that one, and it stayed in the air a little long. Yeah, and Kale Tangeman's going to watch this replay, and he's going to be mad at himself because it, it hit him in, uh, in a bad spot right in the hands. He could have had a, a nice uh, pick and a nice return there, but that was one of the first time I started to see him bring, bring pressure, and it paid off. I mean, uh, uh, Maurer did not have the time that he's had most of the night, so... You know, I think that's something that you might start seeing the Bremen do. Typically, out of their three-four defense, they're always bringing that fourth that fourth pressure guy. Bauer gets rid of it again. Nice catch that time. As no, they're going to say incomplete. I thought he brought that in. No, it is complete. Excuse me. I thought the official down there was waving it as incomplete. But nice catch then that time by Zeller as he was forced out of bounds. Yeah, it was a good catch, and, uh, you know, uh, not only did he catch it, but he got his feet down and then maintained it and was able to, to bring it in, but looks like they had a penalty. It's hard to see the flags on the field, Nate. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to see anything down there, to be honest with you. So a penalty is going to negate the nice pass and catch that time as Fort Lormby is going to be forced back. And this is going to be a third and long now as the Redskins look like they were going to have an opportunity to have a, at least a good a, a good drive going and, you know, pick up a couple of first downs and on the way to pick up another one. But now they got a much tougher time. Yeah, this third and long is going to be a difficult one to convert. Here comes the pressure. Maurer gets flushed out. Going to have to run. Has some space. He has a receiver. And this one is incomplete. It was intercepted, but not able to get it down in the field. And he had a receiver wide, way behind the defense. But, you know, with this wind and how things are going, just got to think you maybe would feel real confident letting that one fly. Yeah, and I think that the other thing was he was sprinting out, trying to evade the, the defensive lineman. And, you know, I just don't think he felt like he had the arm strength to, to get it down there. And not that if you're, you know, playing on a, on a Friday night in your backyard, you couldn't have done it, but on a cold, freezing night with, Guys chasing after you, it's a difficult pass to throw. So he wisely threw it away there and, uh, you know, at least allows them to have a special teams play here. And this punt off the side of the foot one more time, going to go out of bounds. You bring me, going to have good field position. 2.36 left to go. New Bremen on top, 24 nothing. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. <laughs> Welcome back. I'd like to thank our premier sponsor, New Bremen Insurance. Premier, uh, New Bremen Insurance is the premier sponsor for the New Bremen Cardinals. We have continued with our strong local presence in support of our community. Here's Holman working off that right side, trying to get through the line. and He's had a lot of tough yards tonight. He does not go down easy. No, he hasn't. And that's the, the thing about New Bremen, you think spread offense, you think uh, you know they've got three to four receivers every play, but they're really an old school style football team. They're going to come at you. Um, they're going to bring Homan. They're going to bring Schaefer. They're going to try to get team in the ball. And that's what I love about them is uh, they, they do so many different things offensively. They're really fun to watch. Second and five coming up for the Cardinals. Two minutes left to go here in the third quarter. 
Wind picking up a little bit more here at Memorial Stadium. Handoff goes to Schaefer. Schaefer right into the middle of that defensive line. And he only picks up about a yard. Yeah, and, and the yards are they're hard to come by. And, uh, you know, they're not going to do anything different at this point. They're not going to, with, the, with a sound lead, they're not going to open up the playbook and do something so next week's opponent can see it. Or, But they're going to just keep doing what they've done. But, you know, the bad part about that is Fort Lorme knows it's coming. So, you know, these, hards are, these yards are tough to come by. Now, I know we've spent a lot of time tonight talking about the conditions and, you know, how it's rough for all these players out here. You know, we talked about the space heaters that they have on the sidelines. <laughs> you look down right now, the water is freezing. And they are using the heaters to keep the water for the team that, from being just a one big block of ice. That is how rough it is down there for everybody. I, I've never seen that. Um, I don't know if there's a safety code or violation, <laughs> but I'm not sure that's a great idea. Uh, you know, lifting fire above the, the water coolers, uh, you might just have to go with ice tonight. If anybody from OSHA is watching, this was not our idea. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> we're, we're just reporting on conditions. <laughs> 45 seconds left to go here in the third quarter after another Busher electric first down by the Cardinals. Holman takes the snap, hands it off to Schaefer. Schaefer got into a little bit of traffic but did a nice job changing direction, and he gets all the way up for about a seven-yard carry as Schaefer continues having hard yards as well. Well, and I like what he did there. You know, he, he not only hits the hole, but he likes to bend it back against the grain, and he likes to cut it back where those linebackers are over-pursuing, and they've over-pursued to the point where he can pick up big yardage on the backside. And that is going to do it for the third quarter. New Bremen, they are all over Fort Lormie as they are looking for a spot in the Final Four Division set. excuse me, Division 7 as they are on top 24 to nothing. We will step aside and be back with the fourth quarter on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Allen Davis Insurance. Allen Davis Insurance, your solution provider, specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. New Bremen continuing their drive. As you see, Holman try to work around the right side, but taken down. Not able to pick up anything. Maybe even have gotten a short loss on that carry. Yeah, Isaac Reiterman just did a good good job of uh, getting in the backfield and making a play. And it's uh, it's uh, I haven't seen too many guys bring David Homan down a one on one, and uh, he was able to do that on that play. As we take a look at tonight's Reese Myring and Company CPA scoreboard, New Bremen right now on top, 24 to nothing, 11. 20 left to go here in the game as they are looking to take a trip to the state semifinals where by the time you watch this you'll probably know but from where we're sitting it looks like that's going to be LCC. As that pass is incomplete to bring up four down and I imagine when well, we saw him kick a field goal but you know four, four down or fourth and four probably just going to go for it here. Yeah and I think that's Probably why you've seen that pass play, knowing that they're going to potentially have this fourth down play and, and trying to run a pass, maybe to catch Fort Lormie off guard there. But, you know, they run the same running plays over and over again. I, I think that knowing that they were going to go for it here on fourth down, that was why they threw that third down pass. So it looks like we're going to have a another timeout as Looks like New Bremen is going to want to talk about it. So they will use their second Speedway Lanes timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are presented by Speedway Lanes and New Bremen, bringing family and friends together with bowling, fun, and great food for everyone. Also like to thank our we just lost everything up in the press box again. As we have a fumble. And New Bremen looks like they fell on it, but either way, the ball is going to go to the Redskins. 
As I was saying, I'd like to thank our inst instant replay sponsor, Home and Interior, servicing the Auglaise, Mercer, Drake, or Dark in Shelby counties. We are ready to partner with you in your home renovations or new build projects. John, those are not ours. <laughs> my, my partner, John, <laughs> Zerby had to leave the booth. As, you know, we were talking about we're fighting the elements around here as well. We just lost a lot of papers out of here out into the stands. He went to try to collect those for us. He'll be back here shortly. As, looks like we're going to have a measurement. So there still may be a chance that New Bremen keeps this football as they fell on it on the fumble, and, but it still might have been enough to pick up a first down. The officials are getting the chain set as they are looking to stretch. And it is going to be just short, so it is going to be a turnover on downs. Fort Lorme is going to take over. John, thank you very much. You, you ready for this night to be over yet, John? <laughs> <laughs> As, whew, we had a big wind gust come right there and just clean <laughs> us out. You know, it's safe to say, Nate, that uh, I thought it was kind of cold up here where we're at. It's about 20 degrees colder down in the stands. Oh, so I can't imagine what it's like down there on the field. So here's Maurer, drops back the pass off the hands of Ireland, and this one's going to fall incomplete. Yeah, the, these conditions, they're just, they're just brutal. I don't know if, uh, you know, and, and I've coached a lot over the years. I don't know if I've coached in a game this cold, but the wind, I think the wind is the biggest thing. Is just, it's just causing so many different things to happen out there. Well, you know, that's what they, you know, what they say about, they talk about Ohio winds, right? When, oh, it wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the wind. You know, we all can handle cold. It's, it's that wind that'll get you. And tonight, that wind chill, um, I believe, is going to drop below zero, and it may already be there. <laughs> I think I heard somewhere that, that the average this time of year is around 50. It's definitely not 50 right now. Now we're able to complete that pass. Nice pickup for the Redskins. That's going to be a Busher Electric first down. And that's positive for Fort Laramie. I know that they've, uh, if you look at the scoreboard and it looks one-sided and, you know, really hasn't been a one-sided game. I mean, I know New Bremen has really pounded out the yards, but Fort Laramie has been there. They just haven't been able to convert uh, some of these first downs into touchdowns. Well, you know, you think about it, New Bremen scored 14 points on their first two possessions, only 10 points since then. Fort Laramie just hasn't been able to get the offense going. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that uh, New Bremen just, when they get the ball, they're just running, you know, five, yard for, for five yards here, five yards there in their first downs. And that ball control, you know, eating up that clock has really made it difficult for Fort Laramie's offense because by the time they get back on the field, you know, they, they haven't had the ball for so long. Second and 10 coming up for the Redskins. They'll pick up one first down, trying to keep this drive going, trying to see if they can't get on the scoreboard. 10-29 left to go in the game. Maurer going to drop back. Maurer going to scramble as he's able to get out of bounds after a pickup of maybe about four. Yeah, I can't say enough about him. He's just really been a, a great player for Fort Laramie, and you can see that his athletic ability is really the, the key to their offense. Well, and, uh, you know, going back to that second quarter, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that there has been a play that hasn't been a pass play called since they switched the fields back in the second quarter. They've had rushes, but it's been him scrambling. Other than that, they've dropped back to throw every time they've had the ball since then. Yeah, you, I think you're exactly right, Nate. Uh, it just says a lot about who they think, uh, what he is and what he means to this offense. Just out of reach of his re intended receiver that time, going to bring up fourth down for Fort Laramie. I mean, that just really says something. In, in a night like tonight, with what they've had to play in, you know, everything that they've been going up against, especially playing against this good New Bremen defense, they put the ball in his hands every single time. New Bremen knows what's coming, and he's also been up to the challenge, though. He's picked up good yardage. There's just been some mistakes here or there but it hasn't been like they've been overpowering and overwhelming him. No, he's a special player, and uh, you can see why they've made it this far. It's uh, largely because of what he's done uh, in the pocket this year. Maurer one more time, able to connect. Big pickup that time. That's going to be enough for a first down as Fort Lorme is going to move the sticks and pick up another Busher Electric first down. Yeah, and just a, a nice, simple underneath route. 
uh, threw a nice ball, was able to get that completion underneath and uh, get that uh, much needed first down. So right at midfield are the Redskins. Got a fresh set of downs. Maurer takes the snap. Trying to find somebody going to throw this one long. <laughs> and that time Dickey looked like he had that one measured for the interception, but just out of his reach of his hands, it's going to fall incomplete. Yeah, it looked like Grant Dickey jumped about a second too early. I mean, uh, the ball hung up in the air a little bit. and uh, You know, he's just trying to make a play and throwing it downfield and uh, could have been another uh, pick for, for New Bremen. Second and ten coming up for the Redskins. Three wide receivers right, one to the left. Designed run play that time, but not able to pick up too many yards as Maurer was tackled after about a two-yard gain. Yeah, we've heard Ben Saylor's name quite a bit tonight, making plays, and they brought him uh, kind of a delayed, I wouldn't say it's a blitz, but more of a delayed pressure, and uh, he was able to bring Maurer down. Third and 10, 9, 18 left to go. Maurer drops back. Nice catch that time just in the soft spot as the receiver did a nice job getting some separation, getting underneath. And that's going to be another Busher Electric first down for yeah, the Redskins. Just when you think, you know, they're done, <laughs> they, they get a first down. They keep playing hard, and you got to give, you got to tip your cap to Fort Warming right now. They just keep coming back, and they, they're resilient. They, they, they keep coming even though the, the odds are really stacked against them at this point. So it's been all Maurer as he's going to look to throw one more time. Underneath pass is caught. Nice job breaking the tackle, staying on his feet that time. Is he's going to be forced out of bounds just short of the first down. This might be the most, uh, most successful drive they've had tonight, just picking up completions and uh, getting first downs. And now they're you know in second and short here. They're... Uh, really uh, getting close to the red zone, which I'm not sure they've got in the red zone tonight, Nate. No, I, they have not been. I don't think this is – they got close there at the end of the second half, but obviously that drive stalled, ended in an interception as this one gets thrown way out of bounds as the pressure was coming and did get to Maurer, so he had to get rid of it. Clock stopped, 8.39 left to go. New Bremen on top, 24-0. In this regional final, as the winner of this one will move on to play next Saturday night at Spartan Stadium in Lima. As it looks like right now, they'll be matched up against Lima Central Catholic, who at last check was defeating Antwerp. You're right, Jacob. Camera guy reminded me that and this is the wrong division. Division six is going to uh, Spartan Stadium. Division seven, I believe it's going to be uh, Walpock is where that matchup will be. Walpock's got just a beautiful facility, and as does Sydney. I mean, it's been uh, it's been a great opportunity to come here, and it's fun. It's fun to get to go to these different stadiums, and I know it's a lot for these schools to host these games. You know, especially when it's not their home team to get the workers and stuff, but. Sydney does a great job, and so does Walpaw. It'll be it'll be a fun matchup next week. Absolutely, it's my first trip to this facility. This is a beautiful stadium. They've done a great job with it. Mauer drops back. This one just slips out of Mauer's hands on fourth down. It's going to be incomplete. As New Bremen will take over on downs. Yeah, and you, you can hear the the roar of the New Bremen fans there. That they you know they were able to get that stop and. Like you said, Nate, lots of passing, lots of uh, time not going off the clock there. So New Bremen's going to get the ball back with about 8:30 to go, and I think you know they're going to they're going to try to take off as much clock as they possibly can on this drive. So we've seen a steady dose of Holman and Schaefer. That won't change on this drive as Holman takes the first carry. But there's the Redskins defense. They got a great push and got into the backfield immediately. Fort Lormy is going to take a timeout, going to stop the clock. 
as they have their eyes on getting this ball back because they'd like to get some points tonight. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's first downs are sponsored by Busher Electric. Busher Electric is a full-service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. I'd also like to thank our timeout sponsor, Speedway Lanes. Timeouts are, brought, are presented by Speedway Lanes in New Bremen, bringing family and friends together with bowling fun, great food for everyone. So Fort Lormie took a Speedway Lanes timeout and coming out of that one Schaefer takes the ball runs right up the middle as he's able to get a big pick up that time to make it third and short yeah that was a great run by Hunter Schaefer and I think uh, you know uh, Fort Lauderman calling that timeout they're trying to do everything that they possibly can save some time to maybe hopefully get the ball back but New Bremen's in the exact opposite I don't see them throwing the ball one bit here you're gonna see Hunter Schaefer and David Holman trying to, to get this first down and trying to really eat this clock up. Holman hands off to Schaefer one more time. He's up the middle trying to pick up yardage. It's going to depend on where they say he was down. The officials now are going to agree that he is just short. So this is going to bring up fourth and one for New Bremen. Yeah, and this is going to be an interesting uh, decision for Coach Schmidt. You know, I, I think that logically you punt, but, I mean, considering, um, you know, the circumstances, I, I think you go for it just because you, you, you've been successful running the ball, you've picked up yards, and the last thing you want to do at this point is give Fort Lormie another opportunity to score. Yeah, even with the short field, your defense has been on for pretty much all night if you don't pick it up. As we're... As Fort Lormie that time got a little excited and we have a couple of flags on the field, and that penalty is going to be good enough for a Busher Electric first down. Coach Schmidt was pretty excited on the sideline. I wouldn't be shocked if that was just the play itself right there, if it was just a, a hard count because it, uh, it looked like a different formation that we haven't seen tonight. And, uh, you know, they were uh, could tell that Fort Lormie was teeing off and was able to convert. It was. It almost looked like victory formation in the way that they were lined up. Schaefer going to take it, work off the left side, going to continue to churn and churn and churn. And he just never stops moving his feet. It is very impressive the way that he runs. Yeah, he's a great runner. And, uh, you know, looking at next week, uh, playing in the state semifinal, they're going to really have to rely on him. You know, you get to this level, and uh, typically teams try to take away your biggest threat, which would be, you know, David Holman. I wouldn't be shocked, you know, uh, he, with Hunter Schaefer having, he's had a big game tonight and, and continuing to have a, a big game as they move on in the playoffs. We reach the six minute mark here in the fourth quarter. New Bremen just continues to move the ball down the field. Here's Holman, goes to the right side, trying to get outside, cuts it back in, gets across midfield, and he is taken down, but not before he gets the yardage that's going to be good enough for another Busher Electric first down. Yeah, another first down. Not an easy one. Home and cut it up inside, put his head down, fell forward, got the first down. But you still hear the pads smacking, Nate. I mean, these guys are still playing as hard as they possibly can. Um, you know, even though the it's cold, it's windy, it's uh, I'm sure everyone's tired down there, and uh, they're down. Fort Lormie really continuing to play hard. You can hear a chant coming from the stands, M-A-C, M-A-C. <laughs> and, you know, all, in all seriousness, that MAC conference, the what they do and what they can churn out year after year in all sports, not just football, just yeah. continues to be incredible. It is one of the most impressive things in the entire state of Ohio in any division. Yeah, just great communities. I mean, uh, you know, one of the things that I've noticed over the years is just great communities who support their kids, support their families, support the coaches. But... Um, Specifically football, you know, um, the MAC has some of the elite coaches in Ohio. I mean, you're looking at uh, Tim Goodwin and Chip Otten and, you know, Coach Chris Schmidt here has already got a, you know, he's got a state championship under his belt already. So you, you put really solid communities with solid schools together with elite coaching, and this is why the MAC has been so successful. So under five left to go here in the game. 
Schaefer's going to take the handoff. Has a little bit of contact as he has all night long, but continues to run. His yards after contact tonight, we don't keep those stats, but it's got to be getting up there. Yeah, I mean, he just, he's like a bouncing, rolling ball. I mean, he just, he runs and he's just, one person's not going to take him down. And, and I, I like I like watching his feet because his feet don't stop moving. I mean, they're just going, going, going. And that's something you want to coach your running backs up and is that never stop your feet. A lot of times you see a back go down, it's because they didn't pick their knees up, but he continues to move his feet over and over again. Now New Bremen slowing things down a little bit, just wanting to work the clock, game clock, down to five. And we are going to have a timeout. This one's going to be on New Bremen as the game clock was winding down. They didn't want to add any extra yardage to this third down. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replays are provided by Home and Interior, servicing the Anglais, Mercer, Dark, Shelby counties. We are ready to partner with you on your home renovations and new build projects. Third and one coming up for the Cardinals. Pitch to the outside. See Schaefer trying to work through it. It's all going to depend on where they said he was down at. And it might be just short as the Redskins defense did a great job in pursuit to get him down. Yeah, I like the play call. That's the first time we've seen that uh, option uh, play, getting him out to the outside. And I think the, you know, uh, Fort Laramie defended that well, and it's going to bring up a big fourth and one for New Bremen. They're going to take this uh, clock down to the to the end of the uh, play clock to get the play called in. But it's a big fourth and one here at the end of the game. Fort Laramie does still have two timeouts, but one more. First down may just ice this game. Under center, as we're going to have a timeout, and this one, oh no, it is a delay game. The play clock ran out, so five yards going to be tacked on. As now you would think, Fort, uh, excuse me, New Bremen is going to pump this one away and just try to pin Fort Laramie deep. Yeah, you would think so. It doesn't look like they're bringing the punt team on the field, but well, maybe it looks like they are now. Um, pin them deep. You've done a great job offensively tonight, um, and, and you know just try to play some defense here, and and potentially you know get out of here with a big win, moving yourself into a state semifinal game next week. So now New Bremen with the punt, and this punt goes off the toe, got some height, but did not get much distance as it's going to come to rest at about the 30-yard line, almost exactly. So a short punt, but that ball somehow is still rolling. <laughs> as we talked about how slick this field is, and that football should have probably <laughs> stopped rolling about five yards prior to where it did. But just another one of those things in, in a game that I think anybody who is here is going to remember for quite some time because of the conditions that we were in. Yeah, I mean, this, this is... You know, you'd love to say this is football weather, you know, and be tough about it, but no one enjoys this kind of stuff. I mean, fans don't. Players surely don't. Um, coaches do not, you know, but it is what it is. Both teams have to play in it, and uh, you got to give credit to the New Bremen Cardinals. They had a great game plan, and they've been able to just come out here and execute tonight. 2.39 left to go. Maurer drops back. As he continues to throw as he has pretty much this entire game. This one's going to fall incomplete, though bring up second down. Yeah, and you know, you, you look ahead a little bit, and I'm one of those weird guys that likes to watch the weather channel. My wife's like, why is this on again? But, you know, looking at next week, even temperatures looking to improve and being a little bit more seasonal. I, I don't know if we've had a, a, a cold of a night like tonight in the football playoffs in, in a long time, Nate. No, I can't, you know, uh, Obviously, my time around football has been a little bit less than yours, but I, I'm going to be hard-pressed to remember a night where they were having to try to cool off the water coolers because <laughs> the water was going to ice. 2014, there was a Saturday night that uh, we played Tenora in the playoffs, and it was, I mean, it was cold. I remember it being, you know, to the point where everyone had sock hats on and coats, and 
but when you add in the wind, I mean, I remember it wasn't as windy. This wind tonight has been something else. You know, before the game, we're seeing the snow just blow everywhere. Not even to the point there was almost like like snow drifts flying uh, on the field. And now, Fort Lorme are going to run it. Nice change of pace this time. Pick up a good game on first down as we are under two minutes left to go here in the game. Yeah, and, you know, um, I, I think that's the nice change of pace is, is right. You know, I think they've tried to throw the ball. They've, you know, no coach wants to give in to the, to the to a loss, but I think that they know it's it's unreachable at this point. So and right now they're just trying to keep it safe here and get some positive yardage here at the end of the game. Another handoff, but this one's going to be stopped at the line by the Cardinals as pretty much the entire defense got in on that stop. New Bremen's playing with a lot of passion right now, and they've got a lot of young guys out there. You can see a, quite a few substitutions and quite a few new guys who've been standing there the whole night. They're ready to get the blood flowing. I was just thinking a moment ago when that punt kind of went straight up in the air. If I punted right now, Nate, I'm sure my foot would just be on the ground. I mean, I feel like, you know, the foot from Mr. Deeds, the movie, that's what I feel like right now <laughs> yes. because it's so cold out here. I'm sure the toes are still there, but it's not because I can feel them. That's for sure. <laughs> For Lormy is able to pick up another Busher Electric first down on that play to move the sticks. Under a minute left to go in the game. Forty seconds left to go. For Lormy probably going to get one more playoff as. New Bremen is going to move on to the state semifinals next weekend at Wapak. As it looks like they're going to be playing Lima Central Catholic. Those two teams familiar with one another have played each other uh, several times here, in, including into in, uh, tournament action. Should be an excellent game next Saturday. Another Busher Electric first down for Fort Lormie, but that is going to do it as the New Bremen Cardinals are going to be regional champions and they are going to move on to the Final Four, Division 7, and play for a chance at a state berth. Just a big win for New Bremen and great for their community. And, you know, what an awesome uh, addition uh, for another MAC team to be uh, at state. 24-0 is the final. New Bremen played a great game. They got on the board early, and they were able to hold on to their lead as they really stymied the uh, offense and kind of kept Maurer in check for most of the night. John, it was an excellent game. You know, we talked about the conditions. We talked about a lot of things, you know, but at the end of the day, it was playoff football, and it was a great night to be out here to watch it. Oh, it was. It was. And, you know, the elements added something to it. But at the end of the day, I think New Bremen did what they wanted to do. They wanted to give the ball to David Holman. They wanted to give the ball to Hunter Schaefer. They wanted to play an old-style, hard-nosed football. And not only did they run the football, but they played great defense. And very deserving of the win if Fort Laramie can finish with their heads held high. They played a hard-fought game, great season. Uh, both uh, teams, excellent job tonight and very enjoyable game to watch. That is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Memorial Stadium. We'd like to thank our sponsors one final time, Reese Myron and company CPAs. Holman Interior, Speedway Lanes, Busher Electric, Allen Davis Insurance, and New Bremen Insurance. We appreciate you guys supporting local area sports. We couldn't do it without you. One final time from Sydney Memorial Stadium. New Bremen knocks off Fort Lormie 24 to nothing. They move on to the final four. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. Our whole crew, it's been a rough night. We appreciate you guys hanging in there. Have a great night, everybody.